Number 8. The Giant's Graveyard at Mullen Head During the First and Second World Wars, a popular maritime navigation route ran through the waters off Ireland's northernmost point, known as Mullen Head. Consequently, the region became littered with wartime wrecks. Included among the submerged vehicles is the first British Royal Navy battleship that was lost in World War I, known as the HMS Audacious. It had been in service for just two years when it was sunk by a German mine in 1914, less than three months into the conflict. As a super dreadnought vessel, the Audacious was a beefed-up version of the dreadnought design that sparked a pre-war arms race between Britain and Germany. It was extremely well-armed, but it ultimately proved to be no match for the mine that blew it up and sent it plunging 213 feet to its watery grave. Another major wreck in Mullen's head is the SS Empire Heritage. Originally intended as a British whaling ship, it was later converted into a tanker. It was struck by a U-boat torpedo in September of 1944 while carrying 16,000 tons of fuel and various military vehicles, including trucks, half-tracks, and Sherman tanks. The Empire Heritage wreck and the vehicles it took with it to the sea bottom were rediscovered in 1995. Since then, it's become a popular destination among experienced divers who have captured eerie footage and photos of overturned tanks and other vehicles that never reached their destination. Number 7. The SS Montevideo Maru Built during the 1920s, the 430-foot-long Montevideo Maru originally operated between Japan and South America as a cargo ship. During World War II, it served as an auxiliary ship for the Japanese Navy. The ship completed a number of transport missions before meeting its fate on June 22, 1942. While transporting around 1,060 prisoners of war from 16 countries, including 850 Australians, from New Guinea to the Japanese-occupied island of Hainan, the ship was spotted by the American submarine USS Sturgeon. Tragically unaware that the Montevideo Maru was carrying Allied prisoners, the Sturgeon's crew torpedoed the ship in the middle of the night, killing all aboard. It was Australia's largest ever loss of life at sea. For more than 81 years, the wreck's location remained a mystery. It was finally found in the South China Sea in April of 2023, thanks to a renewed search effort among Australian researchers and military members. The sunken ship was located off the Philippine island of Luzon, where it sits at a depth of over 13,000 feet. Video captured by a remotely operated vehicle revealed a visibly deteriorating Japanese truck sitting upright on the seabed along with a car with a trailer attached. Raising such a deep wreck would be both costly and difficult, but doing so is out of the question anyway, because the site is considered a war grave and will therefore be left undisturbed. Number 6. A Ghost Continent While mapping the ocean floor between Madagascar and India in 2012, a team of experts spotted sections of continental crust that were much thicker than usual. While the thickness of the oceanic crust typically measures between 3 and 6 miles, these sections were between 15 and a half and 18.6 miles thick. Speaking with National Public Radio, science writer Sid Perkins explained that these thick sections amount to an area roughly the size of Costa Rica and appeared to represent a lost microcontinent. The team found more evidence of the existence of the long lost slab of land dubbed Mauritia along the coast of the modern-day island of Mauritius. Among the island's sands, which consists mostly of the eroded remnants of volcanic rocks from eruptions dating back to 9 million years ago, they identified 20 extremely ancient grains of a mineral called zircon, which are thought to date back to between 660 million and nearly 2 billion years ago. These crystals are much older than the sands of Mauritius is thought to be. They were found at extremely remote sites, making it unlikely that any sort of human activity brought them there, and their weight largely rules out the likelihood that they were carried by the wind. The zircon granules are thought to be pieces of Mauritia, which scientists believe separated from Madagascar between 61 and 83 and a half million years ago. The lost microcontinent became fragmented and dispersed, and the pieces were buried by volcanic material which formed modern-day Mauritius. Some scientists believe that submerged microcontinents aren't uncommon, but common knowledge of them is limited. 
Discoveries like this are helping to shape our understanding of how modern continents formed following the breakup of the supercontinent Gondwana. Number 5. Mysterious Florida Shipwreck During the fall of 2022, Hurricanes Ian and Nicole washed between 4 and 8 feet of sand elevation out from Florida's eastern coast in Volusia County. The coastal erosion revealed what archaeologists believe is a 25 to 30 foot shipwreck in the waters off Daytona Beach. Experts believe it may date as far back as the 1800s. While it was long known that there was some type of debris at the site, this was the first time enough of it was exposed for the material to be identifiable as a possible shipwreck. Aerial drone footage revealed what appeared to be the ship's hull. It's the second potential wreck to be discovered in the area since the hurricanes. Archaeologists announced plans to investigate the site in April 2023, cautioning that they had yet to confirm it as a shipwreck. The public was warned to steer clear of the site in case metal or other dangerous materials are present. In the meantime, researchers have yet to release their findings. If you discovered a shallow shipwreck, would you immediately back off and notify authorities, or would you poke around for a little while, knowing it may be your only opportunity to see it up close before it becomes off-limits to the public? Let us know in the comments below, but hit that subscribe button first. At number 4. A Giant Waterfall While more just south of the equator between South America and Africa in 2015, Scientists aboard a research vessel discovered a turbulent current rushing through a 15,000-foot-deep underwater canyon. The team counted more than 250 massive consecutive waves similar to the surfers' waves that grow in size as they approach the beach. The succession represented the longest train of waves of its kind, known as Kelvin Helmholtz waves, ever discovered in the area. Oceanographer and study lead Hans von Haren told Live Science that despite their enormity, the underwater waves generate little more than a slight ripple on the water surface. In other words, without scientific equipment, the team would have never had any clue about the level of the activity that was occurring beneath them. The fast-flowing water passes through a narrow formation known as the Romance Trench. It's one of the only known underwater passes that block deep ocean currents that flow along the floor of the Atlantic. Freezing water from the Antarctic travels northward through the canyon and comes into contact with warmer water that flows above. The speed and temperature differences between the two cause intensified activity, generating ten times the flow of the Amazon River. In the section of the trench that Van Heron and his colleagues explored, a stream of water measuring 33 degrees Fahrenheit flows through a four-mile-wide gap. It's just one of three known conduits through which Antarctic bottom water crosses the equator. The unbroken sequence of 250 waves that the team observed ranged in size from 16 to 328 feet. Number 3. Suddenly Submerged Infrastructure Located in California's San Joaquin Valley, Tulare Lake was once America's largest freshwater body west of the Mississippi River. It was typical for the lake to expand in size every winter due to rain and snowmelt from the nearby Sierra Nevada mountain range and to shrink during the summer. During especially wet years, it grew to encompass an area as large as 690 square miles, which would put modern-day towns like Corcoran and Stratford 25 feet below water. Tulare gradually went dry starting in the 1860s due to the construction of dams, levees, canals, and other projects that diverted the rivers that normally fed the lake to other locations. For the most part, the lake bed has been completely dry for at least a century, minus a handful of occasions when excessive rain and snowmelt caused it to briefly reappear. Until now, the most recent example of this happening came in 1983, in which case it took two years for the lake to dry out. Throughout the first three months of 2023, after more than 20 years of record-breaking drought, the region experienced unusually high amounts of rain and snowmelt, along with two atmospheric rivers that transported even more moisture to the area. Tulare Lake filled once again, submerging vast tracts of farmland, roads, and parts of towns. Between the month of March and April, the replenished body of water began to encroach upon Corcoran flooding numerous homes and forcing many of the city's 22,000 residents to evacuate. Residents in the towns of Allenworth and Alpa also received evacuation orders, as the rising waters threatened to make surrounding roads impossible. 
Around 75,000 dairy cows have been relocated, but there's little that farmers can do to save their submerged crops. Scientists speculate that the flooding will continue as snow melts from the Sierra Nevadas. For now, Tular Lake continues to grow bigger each day. According to an update from late April of 2023, Utility crews are racing against the clock as they use helicopters to remove transformers and other vital pieces of infrastructure that have become submerged, as well as equipment that is under threat of flooding. Do you live in California or another region that's experiencing unusually severe flooding this year? How has it affected your life? Let us know in the comments below, but first, be sure to subscribe. Number two, two century old shipwrecks. On November 18, 1914, a trio of ships encountered a brutal storm on Lake Superior and sank, killing all 28 crew members aboard. The steamship C.F. Curtis was towing the schooner barges Selden E. Marvin and Annie M. Peterson when the vessels came up against heavy snowfall and huge waves with strong winds that they simply couldn't compete with. Owned by the Edward Hines Lumber Company, the ships were en route from Baraga, Michigan to Tonawanda, New York. They represented nearly a quarter of the company's fleet, so when they went down in the storm, it came as a significant loss to the business. All three wrecks remained missing until 2021, when researchers with the Great Lakes Shipwreck Historical Society located the Curtis roughly 20 miles off the coast of Grand Marais, Michigan. They had anticipated finding it closer to the shore. In 2022, the team found the Marvin just a few miles away from the Curtis at a depth of about 600 feet. Both wrecks are remarkably preserved owing to the dark, frigid waters they came to rest in, which are largely devoid of plants and animals. The ships show signs of damage that suggested they may have collided. A remotely operated vehicle captured fascinating images of the wrecks, including the lumber and equipment they were carrying when they sank, as well as what appeared to be some clothing. While the wreck of the Peterson remains missing, maritime historian Rick Mixter said that the discoveries of the Curtis and the Marvin solved a chapter in the nation's darkest day in lumber history. Number 1. A Missing Piece of Crust In 2007, scientists revealed that there's an unexplained hole in the Earth's crust spanning several thousand square kilometers in the Atlantic Ocean. It's located on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge between the Caribbean and the Cape Verde Islands, where the Eurasian and American continental plates drift apart creating a volcanic rift. The submerged open wound isn't necessarily unique. There are others like it found elsewhere throughout the world, but its size makes it the most significant example of a phenomenon that has yet to be fully understood by experts. Simply put, oceanic crust typically measures between 3.7 and 4.3 miles thick. When tectonic plates separate, the mantle rises to the surface and fills in the newly created space with magma. This is essentially the crust's way of repairing itself, yet this process is not happening in places where entire pieces of crust are missing. As a result, these holes are filled in with a rock called serpentinite, which forms when seawater comes into contact with the Earth's mantle. The presence of serpentinite essentially indicates that the mantle didn't melt like it should have, which would have allowed magma to fill in the hole. Researchers aren't exactly sure what caused this to happen, but one school of thought suggests that traumatic events, in other words, things that don't normally happen, tore away entire sections of crusts after they formed. Another theory proposes that the missing pieces of crust never formed in the first place. Senior research scientist Bramley Merton admitted ahead of a planned voyage to study the missing section of crust in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that experts understand very little about the phenomenon which defied everything they previously knew about tectonic plate evolution. The expedition took place in 2007, but it appears as though the jury is still out when it comes to explaining the dynamics behind this and other missing sections of deep sea oceanic crust. Thanks for watching. What types of discoveries would you like to learn about in a future video? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next exciting installment. Bye for now.